In a previous video, I used the theme generator to create my Drupal theme. And the best part of using the theme generator is it sets up Pattern Lab for me. Pattern Lab is a style guide that we use to organize our markup and styles into components. Pattern Lab encourages the use of a component based design system called Atomic Design, but you don't need to be an expert on Atomic Design to start using components or Pattern Lab. There are a lot of great resources to learn more about atomic design, so I'm not going to cover that specifically. Instead, I'm going to focus more on how we can use Pattern Lab with Drupal while keeping component based development in mind. So here is my Drupal site. And remember, I technically have a theme set, but I haven't added any styles yet, so this is normal. I'm going to open up Chrome and VS Code side by side to demonstrate how we can find Pattern Lab in our projects. So in this example, it is our site URL, then the path to our theme. So it's going to be slash themes, slash custom, and then the theme name, slash pattern lab, and then index.html. We can also see that this is the path in the code base. And this may sound a little confusing, but we don't typically want to edit the pattern lab directory. This is not where we build our components. You can think of this as more of a holding place to keep the files that run Pattern Lab. If you're ready to start building things, the source directory is where we want to be. This is where we create our components and custom styles, and these will then be compiled into our dist folder, which is how we will tell Drupal to find our styles. Another trick to get to your Pattern Lab quickly is to run the npm run watch command from the theme directory. So I'm going to change directory to get there to my theme. And then I'm going to run npm run watch. And this is exactly why we like NVM. I was on another project earlier that uses a different version of node. So I'm going to run npm use. And what that's going to say is look at my dot nvmrc file and see what version of node we want to use. So now that I have the right version of node for this project, I'm going to run the npm run watch command, hopefully with no errors this time. So now this generates a URL and I can use that to jump to pattern lab. And this is um, a URL that you can use to live reload the site so you can see your changes as you make them. And just a note about using Node and running commands, check your project's package.json to see if you have different commands or even if you have any at all. Since I used the theme generator to cre create this, my package.json is already set up for me. So let's look at Pattern Lab now. Depending on the project you're on, Pattern Lab may look a little different. That's because we can change the layout and change the theme of Pattern Lab. There are also some responsive and breakpoint tools, which is really great for quick mobile checks, but don't forget to still test with an emulator like Browser Stack or Chrome or Firefox dev tools. I wouldn't say this supplements mobile testing. So we can use Pattern Lab to look through our components, and I'll show a side-by-side -side comparison to Pattern Lab and the code base. So we see our accordion component, our card component, our card list component, and so on. These are all starter components from the theme generator. And as you can see, they're not included for you to immediately start using for the client. Instead, they provide the structure and markup for common components. So you can spend more time styling and customizing. Each component is made with a Twig file for the markup, an SCSS file for styles. So you can use really anything here. You can use CSS or SAS, uh, either a JSON or a YAML file to create sample content in the style guide. And sometimes you'll still see a JavaScript file in here as well. What this does is it organizes all the related files to a component to be in one place. I'm sure we have all experienced at one point going to fix something on a website just to break something else because we didn't realize these seemingly unrelated pages shared code. Through a combination of using Pattern Lab and thinking about how we write our code, we can scope all styles and changes to a single component, which will help us with preventing regressions and feel confident when we fix a bug, we are only changing what we want to. The last thing I want to discuss here is the relationship between Pattern Lab 
and the Drupal site. Pattern Lab is independent from Drupal. It borrows a spot in our code base, but it's not part of the Drupal site. Pattern Lab doesn't know of Drupal's existence and Drupal doesn't know about Pattern Lab. Until we point each component in Pattern Lab to Drupal with the template, and even then, Drupal doesn't know it's Pattern Lab. It just knows you're telling it where to find the markup and styles for each component. We can do this by using a combination of Drupal libraries and template overrides to integrate our components. In the next few videos, I will go over some of the basics that'll get us started with integrating our components to Drupal.